Hey everyone, it's Kai and Lafayette, and this is The, the Theory, Theory of, of Living. Living. Thanks for tuning in. We are able to bring you this episode thanks to our Patreon members. Patreon is a subscription-based platform where people can provide support for content creators like us. Thanks to our Patreon members and supporters, we are able to provide free content on the podcast and weekly episodes. By being a Patreon member, you'll have access to our entire podcast library, full video and audio episodes, along with much more. If you like this episode and you feel it adds value to your life, or you hate it, please subscribe on Patreon and or leave your review on Apple Podcast. And don't forget to mention it to your friends over your next beer. Truly, thank you again, and we hope you enjoyed today's episode. And a one, <laughs> and a two, and a three, and we're back. Yes. Episode 17. 17? How crazy is that? That's nonsense. Mm-hmm. If yeah. you're listening to this right now, we're yeah. either dead or we're in Thailand. Yes. It can be neither. Wait, it can't be neither? No. It's one or the other. Yeah. Or we somehow failed our COVID test and mm-hmm. we're still in Arizona. But yeah. today's topic is divorce, which yeah. is pretty poignant considering we're divorcing the U.S. to go to Thailand. Is that yes. what we're doing? Uh, I think so. Uh, k- kind of, right? Um, well, because we're going there with one-way ticket, right? We don't have any plan to return. None. None at all. Yeah. Well, that doesn't mean that we're going to stay in Thailand forever. Um, no. But our plan is currently to stay there as long as we can and then visit all the adjacent countries. Well, not all of them, but at least the countries that we find in, find interesting. And um, you know, even to Europe, you know, all the European countries. Yeah. So yeah. this is just one small leg in mm-hmm. a hopefully long and never-ending journey of at least exploration. Right. And it's going to be geographically, of course, but the exciting thing is all the cultures that we're going to touch and interface with, and we'll probably get a new slice of reality that we've never yeah. had before. Mm-hmm. But I guess to get back onto topic, mm-hmm. part of the reason we wanted to touch on divorce today is it's something you've personally been through. Yeah. Uh, well, I also, we've uh, talked to several of our friends who are going through a divorce or considering divorce, and uh, that really made us think of, uh, you know, all the things about divorce, right? And then I, I went through it myself. So, um, and also, wasn't it the case that after COVID, uh, divorce rate increased? I, I don't know. I'm off pretty top sure of my that was head, the case. In, I'd imagine yeah. there was a lot more cases of separation. Right. Abuse probably went up just because you're spending so much amount of time with people without right. having an outlet to regulate your emotion. Yeah. It's probably easy to take out on your partner or family or, you know, it's going to yep. bring to surface a lot of problems that didn't exist purely because you didn't spend that much time together. Exactly. Right. And that's something we seem to run into in a lot of situations mm-hmm. where we have a different expectation mm-hmm. than reality puts upon us. Yeah. You know, for example, this person when I'm dating them mm-hmm. and spending limited weekend time with them or my evenings in some capacity, they're great. They're wonderful. They're amazing. You just want to spend all your time with them. But for whatever reason, when you shift right. into the place of spending copious amounts of time all your free time with this person and if you don't have balance you can find that wow actually this isn't what i thought it was going to be or it's not as wonderful as previously imagined right and sometimes the opposite occurs of course Mm -hmm. that occurs but i find the latter seems to occur more often of course that's anecdotally speaking that's just from my experience of what i've seen friends go through and other people that i know yeah but it brings to mind an important question when you're in a relationship, especially one mm. that's marriage, right? So it's, yeah. there's a heavier liability. There's a heavier expectation of you. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got finances tied together. Your families probably know each other. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of societal pressure on you to maintain yeah. the relationship. And all these things can ultimately lead you being trapped into a marriage that is yeah. not serving you or your partner. Sorry. I think... We find ourselves in this situation more times than not, which is why the divorce rate is currently above 50%, at least in the U.S. But I do think we're slowly shifting out of this place where instead of seeing divorce as this negative thing or 
a yeah. marriage that has failed, mm-hmm. it's maybe realizing more and more that maybe relationships don't need to be defined in this category and mm-hmm. this kind of never ending thing where there's no room to growth. Um, cause typically when we think of marriage, at least here in the U S right. a lot of people still maintain a traditional idea surrounding it mm-hmm. and they smuggle in a lot of the concepts that go hand in hand with traditional relationships, you know, whether that's monogamy or specific gender roles, mm-hmm. um, you know, the man being the breadwinner, the woman raising the children or staying at home, numerous different variations. And when you're forced to fit in this box, I think a lot of people realize, wow, I, this box isn't for me. I don't fit very well into it. And it's very hard because then you realize I'm unhappy. And it's easy to just say, I'm unhappy because I'm married or I'm unhappy because I'm married to this person. Yeah. When really it might be just you're unhappy because you're trying to fit in a box you just can't fit in. Mm Mm-hmm. Like we talk about all the time, we've yeah. absorbed these embedded values. I guess that you can't absorb something that's embedded, but we live in a society that forces the value system mm-hmm. upon us, and we never really take the time to evaluate if this was the value system for us. Yeah. And then you also have taken consideration your partner. You know, do they have the same values? Did they choose the values, or they've just adapted them? Mm-hmm. And this can be hard. It leads to a lot of miscommunication. Yeah. Miscommunication in a way we're even aware that I had a disinterest or a dislike for a specific thing in that value system. You don't mm-hmm. know how to communicate it to the other person. You just yeah. feel not content or happy or any other varying ways to describe that sensation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, it's, it's the um, discontent largely uh, comes from the misunderstanding or... Um, the resulting conflict with the ideas that you had never um, established for yourself. Like marriage is one of the, I think, one of the closest classic examples of imposed ideas because everybody does it, right? Therefore, you don't feel um, fit in a society if you don't. I mean, pretty much universal, right? Yeah. Almost anywhere you go, marriage is very, um, you know, um, culturally accepted, yeah, I guess, or um, expected. It's a custom, right? Yeah. So, a lot of times, um, I think the reason a lot of people fail marriage is that they don't really. Um, and marriage wasn't largely their their you know own value. To begin with, yeah, you know, I, I'm not, you know, really excluding all the conflicts and uh, difficulties that come with marriage, which could be a contributor to uh, breakage of marriage, but also I think it largely comes from the um, leaving the values that they were not yours in the first place, mm. and I think that's why people should be very careful with who they're getting married with and even marriage is an option for them right yeah because i've talked to a lot of people who have um told me that they are not they don't think they're compatible with the system of marriage you know mm-hmm. uh and for them that that value system is completely justifiable and who who's to judge them for not getting married right i mean it's yeah. just one way of living it's true um, I think, unfortunately, we've run into a situation where we think that just by avoiding this agreement with somebody that we're going to avoid the hurt and the pain. So, I mean, I can speak to this. Even though I've never been married, I've been in very heavy relationships where, you know, sharing finances, things of that nature. Right. Where, for all intents and purposes, outside of the legality, of course, Mm -hmm. we were married. Yeah. Families knew each other. Right. You know, we lived in such a way that it seemed we were married, the way mm-hmm. we behaved, living together, and all those things. And we thought, well, you know, at least I think I thought somewhat to a degree, if I'm not married, then I can at least avoid the risk of being hurt. You know, I kind of withheld myself in some regards or some mm-hmm. aspects, mm-hmm. maybe intellectually, yeah. to try to distance myself from the potential of getting hurt. Yeah. And <laughs> surprise, surprise, at the end of the day, I still ended up getting severely hurt granted yeah. a lot of it by my own design mm-hmm. you know by reacting poorly and making poor choices you know in mm-hmm. this situation it was a one-night stand something i'd never done before 
immediately owned up to it, yeah. but realized how much of my life was absolutely this thing where I was just living with these imposed values and the ideas about what yeah. this relationship should look like, yeah. the direction it heads in. And rather than mm-hmm. be able to confront myself and mm-hmm. my value system, what I want out of life, I react it, you know? Right. So you react in a way that can be very poor. Yeah. And then you can hurt somebody. And I think our culture, specifically young people, think mm-hmm. they can avoid hurt and pain in relationships by just not labeling them. Yeah. But that's not what causes the pain in the first place. Getting mm-hmm. married is not what hurts you. It's the lack of your values, understanding them, mm-hmm. and be able to effectively communicate them with your partner. Yeah. So you can be in agreement. So you can navigate this reality together. Yeah. That's unavoidable. You right. have to do the work to find those things. Otherwise, no matter yeah. what relationship, friendship, marriage, business partner, mm-hmm. whatever it is, coworkers, you're always going to be butting heads essentially from miscommunicating. Yeah. You know, whether it's your value doesn't align with theirs. Right. Or you don't even know where your value lies. So you always yeah. feel like you're bouncing off exactly. the walls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think it's important to, you know, come up with or having that established set of values for your own. And the other person has to um, do the same, right? And then that's the starting point. Even even so, you will still have conflicts. You'll still have, you know, difficulties. Mm-hmm. But that's way better because you know that what your each other's value is, right? Yeah. Then it's all, all you have to do is really, you know, I mean, comparably speaking, all you have to really do is to really communicate your values and try to judge if, if it's possible, if possible, right? I mean, so certain values are not... You know, um, you know, all for change, right? Yeah. Certain values are not, but um, I mean, that's the least starting point. To yeah, me, the bare know? minimum, right? Yeah, bare, that's the that's the bare minimum. And again, guys, yeah. when we're talking about this, you maybe you're in a relationship right now, maybe yeah. you're married right now. Mm-hmm. You can begin this assessment currently, yeah, right now, exactly. with your partner. It's mm-hmm. not like because you didn't arrive to this conclusion from the get go mm-hmm. that you're always going to be at odds with your partner right. or you have to break this relationship and start over. Yeah. That's not what we're saying. Definitely don't have to do yeah. that. Mm-hmm. It's just, you're going to probably have to compromise yeah. and again, compromise is not a bad thing in this situation to realize, to maintain this love with this person, we have mm-hmm. to be able to identify our values yeah. and where we have the issues, you know, mm-hmm. where do we not see eye to eye? Yeah. And then you have to have, this is part of what love is, mm-hmm. bend your will to a degree right. to try to understand their reality and their yeah. point of view and they behave accordingly. Yeah, yeah. again, it's not going to be this 100% sacrifice thing. Mm-hmm. It might be on some issues. Maybe you have to give completely in on some yeah. issues. Mm-hmm. But again, that's part of compromise. Compromise doesn't necessarily reflect this 50-50. Mm-hmm. Like we do it your way this time, we do it my way next time. That's, you know, again, a little bit too binary. It's going to be different. Yeah. For some people that might be the method of operation you choose to pursue to have right. success in your relationship. Yeah. But maybe you can talk about this maybe a little more from your life experience. Mm-hmm. What is it that, I guess in the first place, led you to get married? Because you married an American woman. You were living in Korea. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think it was... Um, the, the marriage seemed to be the, the right next move, you know, because I loved her so much. She loved me so much. Uh, even though the dating itself wasn't um, the most smooth uh, course, because we met together, uh, met at first, and um, I broke up with her almost after a week or so, because at the time, I really didn't... My English was pretty short, and, uh, well, because I grew up in Korea. How old were you at this point, by the way? For the listeners, I know, but... Uh, I was... uh, I was 24 when I met her. Yeah. So you you weren't uh, you weren't a kid. I mean, 24 is young, but not a yeah, kid. Yeah. That was right after the military. Uh, almost right after I met her at a bar. We had a great time, <laughs> and uh, she wanted she wanted to date, and I said, "Yeah, sure." That was my first time dating a foreign girl or you know whoever that is not Korean. And after a week or so, I strongly thought that okay this is not going to work out because i we can't even communicate you know so i broke up with her and she seemed really cool about it (laughs) and um next time i met her at the same bar uh, maybe after a month or so um she was cool 
right? So, okay, uh, this is how like American girls react, I guess. That's kind of cool. How they handle the breakup. You yeah, felt like she was exactly. handling it with like... Yeah, pretty well. Yeah. yeah. But then after a couple of hours, she came to me a little tipsy. Um, oh, God, here we go. Um, I'm not going to go into details, but she wanted to uh, get back together. So after hours of talk, I was convinced. Uh, we started dating again. And I think we broke up one more time after that. But then we got back together again and dated for about two years and then we married. Wow. Yeah. And then you ended up coming to the U.S. through that marriage, correct? Yeah. Uh, after a year and a half, uh, that was not the plan at first. We were teaching at the time um, at the same school. But then she was really homesick badly because she wanted to come back. And um, it was a you know big move for me because I hadn't... I. I I was born and raised in Korea. I didn't yeah. know anything about America other than things I learned from movies or TV shows, just like anybody. So I had that, you know, fantasy about America, but also at the same time, I was very, um, I was nervous, and you know, I didn't want to go come because I had, I had all my friends there, yeah. families there, but then I just couldn't watch that anymore. That she was suffering. Yeah. Uh, from homesick. That's hard. I mean, so you had to compromise, right? Yeah. I mean, any of you who has suffered homesick before can understand, you know, what it is like. It's really bad. Yeah. Yeah. I've never experienced it. I sometimes miss Korea, but I've never experienced severe homesick. I'm not the kind of person. Not saying, not to say that those <laughs> people who suffer uh, homesick is weak. It's just that uh, we all have different uh, characteristics. And sure. I, I, I was born... As the first son of the first son, who was very uh, spoiled, but I um, left home pretty early compared yeah. to other guys, and then um, became independent and sort of disconnected the connection with my family. So there is no really home for me. That's yeah. what I'm getting at. I, I yeah. don't really have strong place that I, I want to call home. Geographically speaking, right? Yes. So I do not, I haven't really experienced homesick other than like the desire to um, go back so that I can see my friends, you yeah, know, yeah. things like that. Foods, just, just minor things. It's never severe. Yeah. But anyway, I couldn't just watch that anymore um, because I loved her. So we came here in 2008 and... I went back to school and um, almost right after school, um, I got a job. We uh, moved to Austin, but she wasn't really happy with our marriage. That's where I met you at that job, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and yeah, the first time when we hung out, she texted me she wants divorce. <laughs> I remember. We talked about it on the first episode, I think. We did, yeah. Blind Pig Pub. We were outside yeah. smoking a cigarette. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, my wife just texted me that she wanted a divorce. Yeah. And I just remember turning and looking at you. Know, I like, want to hear your version of it because I remember exactly what happened, but I, I want to know like your perspective. I'm so, sure that there are things that you haven't told me. I remember we. I remember exactly where yeah. we parked, mm -hmm. like back in that big empty lot mm -hmm. downtown. Yeah. And then we walked. We walked pretty far, actually. That was a pretty far place to yeah. park. Well, we did. We did yeah. that so many times. I know so. so many times. It was great. But yeah, I remember we went there. You know, we were probably. I think we were only on our first, first or second drink. I mean, it was yeah. pretty early in the night. Maybe like nine thirty. <laughs> maybe still fresh. Yeah. 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 You know, recently dark, mm -hmm. not too late. Smoking a cigarette, and he said, "Oh, my wife just texted me saying she wanted a divorce." I remember just thinking, "Yeah, you okay?" You good? Mm -hmm. and you just kind of were like a stoic response about it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, man, this guy cannot be okay. Yeah. Like, as much as you're outwardly just playing you're okay, right. I was like, man, what are the chances? But I also felt incredibly grateful that, mm -hmm. you know, it's our first time hanging out outside of work. Yeah. And at least you're getting, like, bad news in a relatively kind of, like, distracting situation. Yeah. You know, like, I couldn't imagine getting that text alone on a saturday night in my apartment mm -hmm. that would be miserable absolutely miserable mm -hmm. but i mean you you didn't seem surprised in any regard you just kind yeah. of shrugged it off continued forward and it, i mean we enjoyed the night and talked a lot yeah 
but to me it was not a man who was experiencing shock or something surprising right to me it was very apparent that there was a lot of issues and things leading up to that moment Mm -hmm. otherwise there's no way you would have handled it yeah that way such like uh poise i guess yeah (laughs) <laughs> well, that or I would think like this dude's a sociopath I'm, I'm pretty good at it I don't know if it's a good or bad but uh, I don't well I show my emotion pretty easily uh, but I'm quite indifferent about things that other people consider shocking yeah you know well just because I uh, I've grown to learn that life is full of events that are out of your control you know so i i for me the most important thing is not you know getting shocked but the most important thing is how to handle it you mm-hmm. know that's how uh i approach problems when yeah. i see problems i don't talk about yes i'm frustrated sometimes i i show my emotion that way but i immediately uh have a tendency to immediately focus on uh, solutions rather than you know just complaining about the problem itself yeah, yeah that's just my characteristic part of it is that but also part of the other part is you're you're right that um i saw that coming i saw that coming i was just disappointed that like that was done via text yeah you know because she was uh, abroad at the time she could have called me you know that would have been better i mean i'm not saying i would have uh reacted in a different way but i think is that's just more courteous yeah you know yeah i mean there's no easy way to yeah pull the plug so to speak with anybody but that's this week's short version of the episode on the theory of living podcast thank you for listening with us we are lafayette and kai don't forget to join us next week for another episode and if you'd like to help support us we have a patreon page where you can subscribe for exclusive content early access and full versions of the podcast Also, please share with others who you think may find value in our discussion. Leave a rating, a review, and please subscribe. Thank you again. See you next time.